Hey everybody, it's Party Elite with the first ever episode of Total Breakdown, a great name provided by Mike McGraw for what I think will be a pretty interesting segment. In this first episode, we're going to watch a battle submitted by Oroka Boss in which Bretonians take on a dwarf army commanded by Iron Raven 00. Without spoiling the outcome of the battle, let's jump right into it. So first things first, let's talk about army composition. Over here on Bretonia's side, we've got a pair of Knights of the Realm, alongside some spearmen at arms with shields. Let's slow it down here. We've got some men at arms with pole arms, quite a few of them, and then some more spearmen at arms with shields. And finally, more knights of the realm, some grail knights, and taking advantage of vanguard deployment, some pegasus knights off in the distance here. The flying units back here, we've got Leon Coeur in charge, as well as two paladins on flying mounts. And what you're going to see happen is a pretty standard move. We've got these Pegasus Knights that are going to fly down there. And these two Knights over here are going to flank this way. And these two units of Knights are going to flank this way. Again, the front line is just going to move straight up and engage. And these flying units are going to get there earlier and try to cause some early havoc. I do want to comment as well on the fact that Oroka Boss did a good move uh, ranking up his Spearman Arms with shields. Uh, into three bronze and two bronze because that helps their leadership, their melee attack, and melee defense. So it'll help them last longer in the fight, both in terms of damage output and, uh, well, defense, as well as morale. Now, on the dwarven side, we've got a pair of quarrelers, which, to be frank, I think should have been replaced with either quarrelers with great weapons, if you're planning on using them in melee for some reason, or Thunderers, because when you're up against Bretonia, you're facing a decent amount of armor. You know they're going to come in with knights and Pegasus knights, etc., and they all have armor. So don't go with Quarrelers that don't have armor-piercing damage. Uh, now, beyond the Quarrelers, we've got quite a few units of artillery, some organ guns, cannons here. And when it comes to the infantry itself, we've got Dwarf Warriors, uh, a fair number of long beards accompanied with one unit of Iron Breakers, and a unit of Hammerers. So overall a decent composition, though I feel like uh, there are a few too many artillery units. I think there could have been some better balance here. A unit of gyrocopters would have been quite wise. You can bait Pegasus Knights in with gyrocopters and then gun them down with Thunderers or, or Quarrelers. Uh, and gyrocopters also help against Bretonia because they've got uh, high mobility and you want to take care of them using gyrocopters. Um, with all that said though, let's go back to normal speed and see how this plays out. Uh, so again, these Pegasus Knights are coming in from the back. Uh, Raven00 has opened fire with his artillery units into this front line of spearmen and, and pole arms. And meanwhile is adjusting a little bit to prepare for these Knights to come charging in. Or flying in, I guess, rather. He's getting his front line into position. And meanwhile, the flying units, the two uh, Paladins and uh, Leoncoeur, are flying in. And as you saw, they're going to engage, all three of them, these Quarrelers. Now, there is some logic to that. These Quarrelers are going to cause a lot of trouble if they're left, uh, you know, free to do as, uh, as they wish. But at this point in time in the battle, it may have been a bit more wise to engage these artillery units. And then as soon as these front lines get in closer to engage these iron breakers to prevent their uh, uh, their blasting charges from going off. So let's take a look at what the artillery is up to. They're causing quite a bit of damage as you can see to this front line as they're creeping forward. Now the fire has been spread out quite a bit. Let's slow it down for a second. Fire has been spread out quite a bit so it's not as uh, potent as I guess it could have been if all of these artillery units had focused down on one of these units right now the ideal spot to fire would be here uh, you could have seen an early route of some of these units and that could have resulted in a mass route of these infantry units so I think better targeting on Iron Raven's part could have made a big difference in how this battle plays out so let's go back to normal speed and you'll see, uh, again, these Pegasus Knights as well, they fly in and they attack the Quarrelers as well. Meanwhile, by the time the Knights of the Realm and the Grail Knights on this side come swinging in, uh, the Organ Guns and the Cannons have already done a decent amount of damage. Uh, these Cannons have 29 kills, we've got 12 kills, 10 kills, 14. Again, not the largest numbers, but that does make a difference when you have 29 less people coming in 
plus it's affecting overall hit points and morale. So all of these factors come into play uh, when the melee finally begins, as you can see is happening here. Now, these matchups, again, very, very clever sort of composition. You've got men at arms with pole arms for the most part, their armor piercing, which will help against the dwarves. Uh, and again, as I was mentioning earlier, it would have been great if these Pegasus Knights or one of the Paladins had simply broken off and kept these Iron Breakers engaged so this volley couldn't have gone off. But, you know, that's fine. Uh, a little too late for uh, crying over spilt milk, obviously. Also, another clever play by Oroka Boss is to have his Spearmen attempt to flank and envelop the enemy as opposed to charge head-on. This gives them a bit of an advantage uh, and helps them cause some leadership damage because, again, Spearmen, they're not armor-piercing, they're not going to do the best as frontline units, so it's good to use them as flanking units and, of course, they're affordable as well. Now we see also Oroka Boss is kind of using his, uh, his knights really well, ping-ponging back and forth between infantry, and also using his, uh, his flying paladins to give some support to his frontline units. Again, very, very clever play overall by Oroka Boss to systematically, I guess, destroy his, uh, his opponent. I do think a little too much time was spent on these crawlers early on. They were really shattered and damaged and could have been uh, largely ignored in that initial engagement, I find. Now, one mistake that was made here, these Knights of the Realm and Grail Knights that come flying in, great move overall. The thinking behind it's great because you want to support this front line because Bretonian uh, infantry doesn't stand a chance against Dwarven infantry. The, uh, the armor, uh, the melee attack, melee defense, it just doesn't stand a chance. So by bringing these knights in from, from the rear on top of everything else, they're causing morale damage, they are causing extra you know, effects, they're causing a lot of pain. However, um, the units were brought in to support this fight here and this fight here. Unfortunately, it's the central unit that's suffering the most and they could have used some of that support. They did have the support of this Paladin earlier, but that's not enough. Uh, as you can see, even he's leaving right now, leaving these rather weak uh, men-at-arms to fend for themselves. So that really could have helped uh, create a better situation over here, but instead these knights are going back to take care of these quarrelers again. They were causing some hurt with their ranged fire, but not as much as, uh, as this front line is, uh, is feeling the pain. Again, see, the Iron Breakers get another volley off, not doing too much damage, but the fact that they're free to do that is a bit of a problem. And meanwhile, you can see here, these guys have finally given up, and they're breaking off. They've lost their morale almost entirely, and they've taken quite a bit of damage. Uh, approximately two-thirds, a bit more than two-thirds of, uh, of the unit has been destroyed. Now, finally, these Quarrelers have also given up, and they're running off. You can see they're pretty, uh, pretty well decimated, or rather, I should say, devastated. Um, and again, these knights are swinging back in for some more uh, support on the front lines. Really great play by Oroka Boss, this back and forth, hit and run. And you'll see in the meanwhile, these organ guns have fallen quiet, which is why I was saying that it was a bit of overkill with these units, with the artillery units. A good thing to do with organ guns and cannons if you want to rely heavily on them is to keep them off to the sides a little bit uh, out of this central situation because what you end up getting is these organ guns can't fire into this melee friendly fire these organ guns can't fire into this melee well now they can because of the uh, envelopment we've got going on but when the melee, melee started they couldn't have and they largely become a wasted unit they sort of sit back there they look for opportunities but overall that's wasted points money however you want to term it uh, and I think that reliance on artillery and misuse of artillery is what uh, what's really costing the battle. I think the outcome is pretty clear right now. This is going to be a dwarven loss because really there were some issues with targeting and placement. I feel like a more of a square box formation could have kept the artillery alive for longer. I do think there shouldn't have been as much artillery and some gyrocopters would have done a great job. I'm gonna slow it down so that the replay doesn't cut me off. Uh, the gyrocopters would have done a great job just staying above, flying around, making sure that these melee units up at the front uh, could have broken sooner, and even just doing that. If these men-at-arms had been broken sooner by Iron Raven, uh, the 
various you know iron breakers and uh, long beards that were engaged in the front could have been pull, uh, pulled back to help fight the Grail Knights and the Knights of the Realm. Uh, with that said, clever play by Orokobos, making sure that those units stayed engaged so they couldn't make quick work of the Knights of the Realm and the Grail Knights. Uh, now we've basically got cleanup going on right now. These knights are going to be charging around, making sure none of these uh, dwarves make their way out and home to safety. But overall, Orokobos has done a great job uh, doing a flanking maneuver, uh, you know, coming in from the back with the Pegasus Knights. Really, really well played, but it's those small decisions such as where to support on the front line and also the timing of the advance, uh, which was a bit of an issue which has resulted in all of these uh, losses. More, more men, more Bretonians died than necessary. Really what could have happened is this front line charge forward could have started a little bit later so that the knights arrived moments before the infantry was sort of right up in the, the grill of the dwarf, so to speak, because that would mean less time under fire from the artillery and just causing more sort of a wastage on the, uh, on the artillery, or on the dwarven side, rather. Now, again, just making some quick work of what's left of the dwarven army running back and forth and really just cleaning up uh, the mess that's been left behind. But I think, you know, this is, again, this is just clean up now. We can skip ahead to the end and take a look at the results. Well played by Aroka Boss. It was a Peric victory though, simply because of those small uh, small errors here and there. Now you can see here, um, Aroka Boss was actually outnumbered uh, quite a bit, and the overall quality of the units was probably um, leaning on Iron Raven's side. He, he has a good overall composition, though he could have gotten rid of at least one unit of cannons. I think I think both units of cannons could have been axed and replaced with some gyrocopters with brimstone cannons because that would help lure Pegasus Knights into a trap of Thunderers. Uh, in this case we've got Quarrelers, they should have been Thunderers or Quarrelers with great weapons because they were engaged in melee quite a bit. And if they were engaged with melee with their great weapons, at least they would be causing some damage. Right now they only have one and two kills respectively. Really. Uh, end up being a waste of, of points. And you'll see also, overall, you know, when you're looking at it from Bretonia's perspective, these kills really stack up, 29, 26, 13, 22. But when you're looking at the investment for the dwarves, that really doesn't, uh, the math doesn't add up. Meanwhile, you can see here on the Bretonian side, the cavalry was really efficiently used. It's just that if they had been uh, targeting more appropriate units earlier on, they could have saved a lot of these units a lot of hurt. Um, again, it's a Pyrrhic victory just because of those small indecisions there, but otherwise, overall, great play by Orokobos, I think. And uh, with a few sort of adjustments to composition, Iron Raven could have provided a significantly uh, better challenge, especially considering how Orokobos was really not prepared to defeat more than, say, one unit of gyrocopters with brimstones. Uh, just one unit of Pegasus Knights, that could have gone very poorly, uh, but fortunately, Iron Raven's build was not up for the task. Poor composition and, uh, and a little bit of uh, mismanagement in terms of army placement and, uh, and how to engage the enemy is what cost the battle. Hopefully this was helpful, seeing this battle broken down and broken apart from both sides. And if you guys saw something that I missed, feel free to comment and let everybody know. Again, I see this as sort of a collaborative learning atmosphere. Uh, there's definitely stuff that I must have missed, maybe something that I'm not thinking of, which, uh, which one of you might notice or one of you have seen has been really successful in the past. So feel free to drop a comment and let me know uh, how you may have approached this or anything you saw that, again, that I simply didn't point out. But overall, I think there were some core concepts here that were covered and that uh, could really be sharpened. Uh, stay tuned for more episodes coming along. If you can think of any ways I can improve this segment, do let me know. But other than that, if you'd like to see more Total War content, make sure you subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you on the battlefield.